Hi guys, in this video I'm building some sort of storage system to store my tools into the trunk of this Dacia Duster two-wheel drive. So my previous car had a nice wheel bay in the trunk where I could store some of my tools in case I had any problems on the road. I recently replaced my old car with this two-wheel drive Dacia Duster which has a decent trunk but unlike the four-wheel drive version this two-wheel drive has a spare tire underneath the car. So besides this small compartment for the car jack, there is no room for the tools I like to carry with me. So yeah, I think you can say I'm one of those tool people. I intend to use these tools for small repairs on the car, but more often they just come in handy during family visits. To store all those tools in the trunk I would like to make some sort of frame. Closed with one panel in the back so small baggage can stay in place, and two front panels that can be opened up easily. So after taking some measurements, I designed the frame to look something like this. For this project I will be using three small sheets of 15mm plywood, one for the parts of the frame and two for the top surfaces. So here you can see the dimensions in metric and I also converted them to inches. The plywood I'll be using is a standard grade with a tin veneer on both sides. I start with a few rough cuts and then cut out all the strips that will be used to build up the frame. This small miter saw was used to make the cross cut so everything will be square. One side of the frame will be rounded off to avoid any damage to the fabric interior of the car. I made a rough cut with a handsaw and then used a belt sander to sneak up to the line. Next some pre-drilling was done at the drill press, followed by a countersink bit. Some strips for the frame are glued together with wood glue for additional strength. I used my manual nail gun to fix them in position and then clamp them together until the glue had curved. The next day the strips are cut to length on the miter saw. To fix the frame to the car I will be using the metal hooks in the trunk. I drew the shape on a piece of scrap MDF, made a few rough cuts and used the belt sander again to sneak up to the line. I added a screw hole to each piece, did some more countersinking, and then the parts can be separated, in this case with a handsaw. Next they are ready to test fit in the car. It's important that the pieces have a loose enough fit, otherwise it will be a pain to mount and unmount the frame. When the fit is good, I add some wood glue and screw them in place with a cordless drill. To keep the metal hooks fitted in place, I drilled some more holes. These holes will be used later to fit a cable tie around the metal hooks. Access to these hooks will be rather difficult in the final stage, so I'm adding another hole with a Forstner bit. This hole can then be used to fit the hook to the frame and guide the cable tie in position. Next I have to deal with a piece of metal between the back seats. I marked the location on the plywood frame and used a router to make room for the metal part. A quick test fit and that's one less problem. So by now we finished the front, back, middle and side pieces. Let's glue these things together. I added some wood glue to the joint, hammered it in place, and then added two screws. The same thing was done on the other sides as well. I added a dark grey color with the paintbrush to sort of match the fabric interior of the car. So now the plywood frame is all done. Next I'll be making the top surfaces, which you can see here. 
Again I used a table saw to cut the panels to the right size. Then I marked out the center line and lined it up in the car. To translate the curve to the plywood I used a speed square and a ruler. The end of the ruler is put against the curve. Next I pick a number on the ruler which is about 1cm from the edge of the plywood. I mark this number and push the ruler forwards. The ruler will slide to the left as it follows the curve. Keep marking the same number and you'll end up with a nice marked out curve. When both sides are done, the panel can be taken out again. So back in the shop I connected all the marks with a pin. You can eyeball it or just use a ruler. Then I fitted a new blade on the jigsaw, made a rough cut about 2mm from the line and finished up the edge with the belt sander. So with the top surface cut out, the next job will be installing this piano hinge. I don't want the hinge to stick out like this, so I'll be using a router bit to remove some material. And this box of shame will help me out. I made this thing many years ago and it's still running, but I really should make a new one that is easier to adjust. Basically it's a cheap router with a broken handle. It has a small fence which can slide back and forth and the height needs to be adjusted like this. I installed it onto the floor and then cut out the slots for the hinges on both panels. So now the hinge fits nicely into the slot. Next I'll need to cut the center line to separate the front panels. I clamped a metal ruler to the plywood which will act as a guide for the circular saw. I did some light sanding and used a small paint roller to cover all the panels with a satin varnish. The bottom of the lid will be left in the satin finish, but all the other edges will be painted in a dark grey. This includes the edge of the top surface, as I'm planning to glue on a rubber finish later on. The hinge is then cut with a dremel tool, so the front panels will be able to swing separately. Next it's time to mount the hinge to the panel. I marked the holes and pre-drilled them with a small drill bit. A larger drill is then used to countersink the holes underneath the hinge. This gives the hinge some room to deform as I'm actually using it upside down. Now I can add the front panels to the back and then screw them in place too. Then it's time for a test fit, and with a small pencil I marked the location of the frame onto the bottom side of the top. Back in the shop I then locate the frame back in position using the markings. I use these metal corner brackets to connect the frame onto the back panel with screws. This way I can easily separate them later if necessary. I made a small adjustment with the Dremel tool because it was a bit hard to get behind the metal hooks with my fingers to unclimb the frame, so this will fix that issue. So everything is working as it should, but to keep the lids closed on bumpy roads, I decided to install two magnets. I screwed the magnets to the front of the frame, and the metal plate goes onto the bottom side of the lid. Next I will cover the top with an elastomer. I found this car boot liner, which I think will work fine. And this is the glue I'll be using, something water based and sticky. I ordered a large sheet so I roughly cut it down to size with some small overlap. Next I followed the instructions on the container and added the glue on the back panel. That turned out to be a bigger mess than I expected, but I just kept on going and managed to glue the sheet into position. I then used a few rollers to remove any air bubbles. For the front panels I switched to a paint roller to apply the glue, and aligned the sheet with the hinge and center line. 
Next I turned the whole thing upside down and cut off the excess with a sharp knife. Then it's time to install the project into the car. I carefully slide it in and wiggle the frame between the metal hooks. Next I clamp the hook onto the frame on the left side and do the exact same thing as well on the right. So finally I have a dedicated space to store all my tools. Some of you might wonder why I left so much space in front of the frame. Well, this bolt is the reason why. It needs to stay accessible to loosen the tension on the spare tire. So I can pull it out whenever I need it. So job done and this tool can go back to its new home. So I'm pretty happy with this project. I've been testing it out for a few weeks now and so far so good. Well, I'm off to the next project. Many thanks for watching and keep safe.